Everybody, please welcome Slash. Really busy, haven't you? I'm always busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you mad? I mean, I, the, I guess the, the, you finally have a solo record out. This is like a proper solo record. Yeah. Did, finally. Did it just occur to you? Go, I think I need to do this. It's, it really it did. It was like I got to a certain point and I was like, you know what? I just need to uh, do my own thing for a minute mm -hmm. and uh, just sort of be the master of my own destiny for a couple seconds. Well, and you, you've had the uh, you know the chance to work with a bunch of different singers in your life. There's certainly strong personalities between several of your bands. This record is so like, oh, let's have a thousand singers on this. You just right? Went, you, <laughs> did you just <laughs> hand pink? Um, what I did was I, I wrote a bunch of music and then I would listen back to it and think, who would sound good singing this song? Who would sound good singing that song? And and it was pretty instantaneous. And I would put, make a demo and send it to, we'll call them up and go, hey, would you be interested in singing on, that was the hard part. And then uh, and then send them a demo and see if they liked it and take it from there. Were you, um, is it an easy call for you to make? Well, I, I started with people I knew. <laughs> <laughs> who was the first, who was the, I mean, tell people who's on this record. I mean, you got, um, well, I mean, Ozzy's on there, Ian Asper is on there, Fergie's on there, um, Kid Rock's on there. Is this uh, the first Andrew's time ever there. not counting a charity show where Fergie and Ozzy are on the same record? <laughs> well, I say it was because of a charity that Fergie and I met and actually played together for the first time like four years ago when I discovered like what an amazing rock and roll voice she has. Mm -hmm. It's part of the thinking of have, you know, having a bunch of different lead singers is that it actually allows this to be your identity and that you're, you're able to, not just to you know, be in your own space, but important for your own identity to kind of, to have this moment. Um, I hadn't thought of it like that. I mean, I think really what, what, what came down was I just wanted to write a bunch of music and play guitar and I'm not gonna sing. So I had this idea because I do so much session work um, and I go in and I, I do guitars on all these different people's records and you sort of do it and give it away. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, I'd like to have a bunch of people come and sing on my record, which seems like sort of a cocky attitude, but realistically, I really wanted to do that. And so that's, that's sort of why I got all these different singers together, get a different person with a different flavor for every song, because all the music was very diverse. You know, and, and, um at what point did you think you needed it? Was it in Velvet Revolver where you looked around and went, time to go? Well, it wasn't that. You know, I'm still in Velvet Revolver, but there was the, uh, the Scott Factor. Yeah. And we had just finished a, a, a haphazard tour with him. And uh, the last gig in Amsterdam, we said, okay, that's it. We're done with you. <laughs> and and it was, I think the feeling was sort of mutual. So I'm not, I don't want to throw Scott under the bus. But uh, when I got home to L.A., I was like, okay, this is that time where I think the frustration level has reached a point. I can deal with a lot of stuff and have been for years and years and years, and it's cool. But at this point, I said, I, I need to, for my own sanity, just do my own thing for a minute. Yeah, but between Scott and Axel, it's two of the strongest personalities. Yeah, but also two of the most kick-ass rock and roll yeah, singers for around. sure. Yeah. For sure. And so... Uh, you got to be crazy, you know? <laughs> to do that? <laughs> did you know that when you started, though? Uh, that I, singers are well, going to have to do that? No, way? actually, I did know it when I got started, because my, my parents, um, right. my mom especially, was always doing clothes for all these very sort of neurotic entertainers and I got to see craziness firsthand from a pretty early age and I said that's what I don't want to be like when I grow up but I'll I end up parting up with one you know? even yeah. even those crazy crazy GNR days where you were do you remember that being a kid do you remember those moments and say I, there's a line I can't cross I, I think there's sort of like a subconscious trigger that sort of goes okay that's it you yeah. know that's end of the line right there uh, but what, what's for you I mean just being older and having done it for, for that much longer had, how did, do you approach it differently at this age? Um, I mean, the writing and the, and the art, the artistic. No, I think you know, you just sort of go for what you know, and and it's always a new experience. Every time you sort of sit down and start working on a new record, you know, you have the experience that you have, and you still sort of start off not knowing exactly how to go about it. Maybe I'll try it this way and mm -hmm. see if this works, or try it, you know, whatever. This was definitely one of those cases. You know, looking back on the whole process. Um, it, it, it's, it's a lot of work, but at the time I just sort of jumped in both feet and didn't really think about how hard it was going to be or how complicated it was going to be to get people down to do the sessions. And it was actually pretty pain free. Do you have, did you have anxiety before that? Is there a little bit, because when you have to challenge yourselves, especially when you have, you have a muscle memory, right, of how to do this job. Yeah. So was there anxiety going, making your way to the studio? No, uh -uh. I, I just, I just sort of go for it. I try not to think about what makes me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> what does yeah. make you nervous at this stage? Talking in front of an audience. Did it? <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a great job so far. Um, that 
That's actually one of the benefits to have a crazy lead singer, right? Is let them take a lot of the heat off of you. Yeah, well, you know, being the musician, you sort of hide behind your guitar and say, I, I just play, you know. Mm -hmm. And I actually refused to take that role of being the lead singer and being sort of the complete focal point of the, the group. You know? But you think you could do it, right? No. No? No. I don't have the personality for it. Do you have the voice for it? I can, I can sing, I can hold a tune, but then again, I don't even like to hum to myself. I hate the sound. <laughs> yeah. You know. it's, it's a crazy so, place to be, right? Right. So, so it's, it's strictly guitar for me. And so but you think you'll come to a point where you have to challenge yourself to that next level? You know, I'm not going to say it'll never happen because every time I ever say that, then something like that does happen. So. And then you're for who, who knows, you know? Looking across and seeing Duff, that, what's that like for you? I mean, to, to be working with him on this, I know you've continued to work and be friends yeah. with him, but just to still make music with this guy. Well, that particular occasion was a total friendship thing where he just came down and then David Grohl, so we're all good friends, and just come down and, and just jam. So it was really none of the pressures of being in a band. I think that was, uh, for, for a lot of the artists on the record, it, the reason I got such great performances from them is because it wasn't their next big single or anything like that. It was just you know, jamming on Slash's record, no big deal. The, um, what was Dave Grohl like? Dave, um, Dave is the, the, he's the greatest example of what, I, you know, I hate to use the term rock star, but it's the best one I can come up with. He's what a rock star should be. He's got a great attitude, he loves to play, he's not, um, you know, he doesn't have a huge ego that you got to deal with, and he just wants to get going, and he's got lots of energy, and and just good spirited all around. So I actually look up to him because he handles it really well. You're going to play with Fergie. Yeah. She's like a closet rock and roller from Orange County. She's <laughs> just never had the opportunity to be in a rock and roll band because that's tough for a girl. So I was like, wow, was, that was another sort of discovery for me. Well, why do you think it's tough uh, for a girl? Because it is. It's tough to just be in a rock band, period. But to be a, a girl in a rock band, just to get anybody to believe you. You've talked about the Axel thing, saying you have no more ill will. Have you settled into a good place? Because, and I wondered about for a guy like you who's had so much time out of that band and built your career out of that band, it's still such a defining moment, and people are still excited when they, you know, when they yeah. think about you. No, in that band. and, and that—that's sort of an enigma, you know, because it has been so long, and the fact that it generates so much attention and so much fascination with it, and all these kids are into it now who never even saw the band when it was around mm -hmm. in its original form. Um, I think the problem with you know talking about that particular subject is because it didn't end on a bat on a good note. Mm -hmm. Every time they bring it up, it just automatically makes you say negative stuff. Yeah. And so it's partly my fault because I, I generate a lot of ill will just by going out there and saying all kinds of negative stuff. So at this point I'm just like, you know, I don't really want I'm not really bitter about it and I haven't been for a while. So I'd just rather not talk about it. <laughs> you but know, how so. do you find that place? Where do you where do you, is it is it a is it a is it, does the water slowly boil or all of a sudden is it, is it a moment of clarity where you say, I'm not bitter about this and I'm now at the next stage of it, my life? It usually happens when nobody's talking to you <laughs> and you get a, a sense of clarity and you're like, okay, this is how I'm going to approach this. And then you get out there and nine times out of ten you go back to your old ways of doing things because you just spontaneously say, you know, negative stuff. But at, at this point I've been very conscious of like going, I do not want to be made to go there by right. anybody. Well, I guess I prepared you though for the, for the next band. You know, just the idea of having an experience of working with a band dynamic again. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> All things considered, I, I think this making this record was actually a really, really great experience for me because it reinvented what I love about doing what I do. And every so often I have to go through that because uh, being in a band, especially being in a, in, a, in a big band with a lot of managers and a lot of different personalities, sometimes like the love of why you do it gets sort of lost in all the confusion. The, the, the people that are on this record, I mean, it, it's everybody from Fergie, like you said, uh, and Ozzy Osbourne, Chris Cornell, uh, Lemmy, like you mentioned, Kid Rock is on here, Iggy Pop is that's on cool. here. That's cool, I've never seen this. Yeah, I mean, that's... <laughs> <laughs> There's, you, you recorded with Ian Asprey from The Cult, massive yeah. band, yeah. Um, who you know all too well. The guys, like names like Ozzy connected people, Chris Cornell, uh, you know, what was... I mean, you've known Ozzy for a long time. Yeah. What was that like? Just on your song. It, um, that was that was a pretty big moment because yeah I have known Ozzy for a lot of years and we've we've uh, done some live gigs prior to doing this but uh, when he signed on to do it and then he had me come up to his house and we sat and worked on the song together it's that voice that you've been hearing since you were whatever you know since for me it was like since I was 13 you know the Iron Man voice or whatever paranoid you know sort of working out the lyrics and singing right next to you and it's such a familiar voice it's very surreal I'm yeah. kidding. It's good to see you, man. Thanks for coming in. It's good in. to see you. The record's called Flash.